Hi, I'm James Robinson, and this is my stock pick of the week. This week's stock is Graham Holdings, symbol GHC. I actually bought this stock back on May 12th. I just haven't gotten around to doing a video. However, I bought it for $668 a share and change. It's currently at $669.14. So effectively, everything, all the economics that were in place when I bought it are still existing. This brings up a point, it takes a long time for me to make these videos, and if I'm busy doing you know, my day job, it can take me a couple weeks to get around to publishing the videos. So if you want information when I buy a stock or sell a stock in real time, the best place to find that is on Twitter. Uh, my handle is at Robinson Stocks. Whenever I buy a stock or sell a stock, I always put it there. If I also see an article or headline or a video that I think is especially interesting, I'll also post it there for you to follow. So feel free to follow me there. Uh, you can see a map here of where my subscribers are. If you like these videos and or especially if you make money off of some of my stock suggestions, drop me a line and let me know where you're following from. I get a charge out of seeing people from around the world following me. I'd especially like it if I could, if some, anybody from Africa is following me. I've got, you know, 350 followers and, and it appears that no one's from Africa. I don't have any dots there and it's kind of bumming me out. Um, also, thank you to everybody who's subscribed, uh, who's liked and commented. I do appreciate it. I do look at all the comments. And uh, often, if not always, I write people back and, and at least respond to their comments. Uh, so uh, let's get on to the video. Whenever I suggest you should buy a stock, I always do five videos. Uh, the first video is an overview. where We talk a little bit about the history of the company and what it is that has me interested in the company. Uh, then we talk uh, an operations. We look at the deep dive of how efficient a job the company does at delivering goods and services to their customers. I look at the balance sheet as a way to look at the, uh, the way that the company is maintaining or managing their risk, how much debt they have, what the likelihood is that debt's going to be a big problem for the company. Dividend is one of the important ways that a company can return wealth to the shareholders, especially if you're a dividend investor, you want to watch that video so you can see why I believe, or if I believe those dividends are secure and something you can bank on continuing and hopefully increasing over time. And wealth creation is sort of a total wrap up on the company. And what I really do is look at what kind of job the management is doing and finding ways to create wealth for the shareholders, whether that's by taking actions that make the stock go up or buying back shares, paying dividends and or efficiently reinvesting profits. Uh, so that's sort of what we try and do with these videos. Uh, hopefully you follow along and hopefully you watch all of them for this company, uh, Graham Holding Company. So the Graham Holding Company, uh, as the name implies, is a holding company. It really is an amalgamation of a bunch of companies that uh, many of them have no interrelation to each other. Um, most of you will remember, most of you who are value investors, or if you've studied you know, Warren Buffett, et cetera, will, may know that the Graham uh, Holding Company is actually the old Washington Post. And that's a stock that is uh, steeped in history if you're a value investor and if you follow Warren Buffett. Um, however, the family sold the Washington Post in, 19, or in 2013 to Jeff Bezos for $250 million. They no longer have any affiliation to the, to the newspaper, which is in of itself a very interesting fact. Um, here, here's the thing you should think about. Uh, the Washington Post was founded in the late 1800s. It was a family company uh, up until the 70s when it started to get famous to us value investors. Uh, there's a lady named Catherine Graham who ran the company, uh, but she ran the company after, it really was just a housewife uh, and then her husband committed suicide. Her husband had been the managing editor of the Washington Post. He committed suicide. She came over and took over the company not knowing anything, but it was a family business. And there's a fantastic book about her that, that you can read. Uh, long story short, she became one of the most famous newspaper publishers in the world, uh, very respected around, uh, in both for her business acumen and her publishing. Um, in 1973, uh, a guy came along from Omaha, Nebraska named Warren Buffett bought 10% of the company for, but I'm sorry, eventually owned about 28% of the company, uh, but he bought about $10 million worth of the company, which was about one eighth of the company at the time. And um, Catherine was really afraid of him. She thought he was kind of a corporate raider kind of guy uh, to us to calm her down or to, to assuage her fears. He said, look, you can have my proxy. I'm not interested in controlling anything. I just like the asset and I, and, and I don't want you to do anything different than you're doing. A couple of years later, they became close friends. He eventually got on the board and became an advisor to her until her death. Um, so it's very, this is a, something that if you're a Warren Buffett follower like I am, you, you kind of grew up knowing about this company and about this relationship. 
Another thing to know is that Warren Buffett was always a huge admirer of newspapers as a business. Uh, he felt that they had effectively a toll bridge for information. Imagine that you're in a city like Omaha back in the 70s and 80s. There was no internet and there was no way to get information to people in your immediate area, but only in your immediate area. So if you were a car, deal, a car salesman, a car lot, for example, in Omaha, how would you let people know you're having a sale? Well, you couldn't go to Google and Yahoo, they didn't exist. Uh, so you would take an ad out in the regular, in the local paper. And um, same thing with your, if you were selling your car or holding a garage sale, the only way to get that information out was to put an ad out in the newspaper. And so the newspapers were tremendously profitable. That profitability has eroded obviously over time. Uh, the business model doesn't work very well anymore. And it's fascinating, uh, Warren Buffett has sold uh, or shut down the, the Buffalo Post. He used to own a little company that had about 31 regional newspapers. He sold all of those. Um, having said all that, it's fascinating to me that uh, the Graham family would have sold the Washington Post. I thought they would ride that down to the bitter end, but they recognized it was a bad company. They recognized Jeff Bezos had a political reason to buy the company, was willing to overpay for it, and they were smart enough to take the money and run, which is one of the things that leads me to believe this company is a good company. Just this idea that they were mercenary enough to get rid of the Washington Post when it was time to do that and take that money and do other things with it. It's really good for the stockholders. I appreciate that they did that. And it's one of the reasons why I'm giving them a lot of leeway in terms of what they're doing managing this business and why I'm suggesting you might do the same as an investor. Um, and then for example, last year during the pandemic, this company bought back 7.6% of its shares. They did that at an average of $398 a share. As I mentioned earlier, this company is trading at $660 a share today. So they did a fantastic job enriching us, the shareholders, by doing a very intelligent buyback when the stock was depressed. That's the kind of things that I like to see in a management. And when I see those things in management, I like to invest very long term. Um, another thing is when you read the annual reports from this company, it's kind of like reading one of Buffett's annual reports. These guys say all the right things, and I think they do the right things as well. Headwind, there are headwinds for this company. They own seven regional television stations in Miami and Houston and other cities. Um, actually, they sold the one in Miami to Warren Buffett. They own, they own it in seven cities, uh, but, but Miami isn't one of them. Um, and that's a headwind because that business is eroding sort of the same way newspapers are. And again, the fact that they got rid of the one in Miami demonstrates that they're willing to get out of that business as well. What they are doing, however, is taking all those profits and buying other companies. And that's a, that's a very solid thing. Uh, and so today, as a holding company, their assets include Kaplan, which many of you have heard of, is Kaplan Education. So if you want to study for your SAT or your ACT, Kaplan's a place that does that. Kaplan also has uh, international language training. Graham Media owns these seven media hubs, including TV stations. Joyce uh, makes lifts. Hoover is wood-treated products. Uh, I think Forney is the um, uh, burners and uh, gasoline, uh, 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 I'll come back to that, sorry. But anyways, they've got this, the, the Graham Healthcare has 50,000 uh, beds for assisted living kind of communities. Um, Automotive, they own three car dealerships. Framebridge is an online internet um uh, seller of picture frames, right? Art frames. Uh, FP is a magazine dedicated to foreign policy. Uh, Slate is also related to politics and, and it goes on and on and on. They've got several other companies that they own, but the idea is it's kind of a mini Berkshire, right? Berkshire Hathaway is famous for buying all these companies that are very well run. And the companies that, that are being bought by Graham are significantly below the radar relative to what Berkshire would buy but they seem to be very solid. And so I like this as a company and I think it's something you should consider buying. Uh, the company's market cap uh, as of March, uh, I'm sorry, as of, I guess it'd be May uh, 14th of 2020, uh, was 3.3 billion. They have revenues of 2.87 billion. They had profits of 443 million, but that's not completely accurate. Uh, they sold the company and some of those profits are capital gains as opposed to regular profits but that's what they do show. Uh, the company's PE ratio is 7.6. They have a, a dividend yield of 1.21. They have about a billion dollars in debt. They also have about a billion dollars in cash. 
and that's after making this giant buyback that I talked about earlier. Um, the company is not a member of the S&P 500, as I've done videos saying that I think the S&P 500 in total is overbought and is due for a correction. I'm trying to focus on companies that are not part of the S&P 500. And so that's, that does, this company does qualify for that. Um, one of the things that I do first when I'm looking at a company, before I even look at the stock price, uh, before I look at their profits or anything else, is I go through the company and I try and analyze the company in these 29 categories that I think are important. I, those, nine, those companies include nine categories that have to do with um, operating the company. And operating the company to me is defined as how efficiently uh, the company is able to deliver goods and services to the customers. I look at 10 categories of financial, which just has to do with the balance sheet issues and the company's debt and interest obligations. And then I look at uh, 10 management issues. And to me, management issues is how good a job does the management do in creating wealth for the shareholders? So I look at those uh, 29 categories. I come up with, I grade everything on a scale of one to four. Uh, this company uh, in the aggregate is a total of 3.03. I generally tend to only buy companies that are above a 3.0. So this company is on the low end of the companies that I would consider buying, but still an excellent company. Um, it is uh, the 150th highest rated company out of the 895 companies that I've looked at. And we're buying this company at a very, very low PE ratio, especially low relative to the S&P 500. Um, so when you add all that up, you can see that, you know, looking at the basics for the fundamentals of this company, it's solid, not spectacular, but very, very solid. Uh, and because it's a Warren Buffett kind of company, and because I look at it as sort of a baby Berkshire, and I really respect some of the decisions I've seen the management make that don't show up in the box score, um, I think this is a company that you should consider buying and holding for a very, very long period of time. So that's the uh, overview and introduction to Graham Holding Companies. Hopefully you'll watch the other videos and uh, give, me, give me your feedback. Thank you very much.